Therefore, what? Well, well, I'm, I'm astonished. That, I mean, can we hear? Can we hear, that's please? That's what I was being blown away by is the fact that so, I, for me right now, I still I don't have any proof to it other than my own mind that that a thought is easier. It, it may be a buildup of a prior will or whatever it is. I'm not disagreeing with that, but what I'm saying is that a, the fact that a thought can come and go so easily. And yet we have, I don't know if you want to call, if a previous will is called a choice or not, I don't know. But I would say that that would be, what we're saying is that it's more impactful than an action. To me, that's mind-blowing. Okay. That let, me, let me try to put things in a better perspective for you. If a person has a, does a, a tiny action, it will have a tiny effect. If a person has a fleeting thought, it would be no more effective than a tiny action. In a higher place, but it will still have a tiny amount of effect. So when we're talking about actions being powerful, as we all understand actions are powerful, those are powerful actions. The little teeny things that we do, like if I move my keys from here to here, that didn't accomplish anything for anybody. Right? So the, 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 the extent of effect that that action is going to have is going to be minute. If I have a fleeting thought for half a second that leaves my mind, the effect that that thought's going to have is also going to be minute. Right? So you can't think to yourself, oh my gosh, I have this fleeting thought for half a second and I'm destroying upper realm. No. That fleeting thought for half a second is going to have a fleeting half a second effect in the upper realm. The major actions that we do have major effect. The major thoughts that we have have major effect. So let's keep that in mind. So everyone's questioning, well, what if I, this thought just comes into my head? Well, first of all, if it's not your choice, you're not held accountable for it. Well, first of all, happen. for whatever reason, Hashem has his calculations, as we said. So we said in the beginning of the class. Well, we, said we, have control over our thoughts we do have control over our thoughts. We have control over our actions. And yet, there are certain things that Hashem manipulates. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. I mean, and, and the example, that was the example I gave, Brad, that was the example I gave with the prime wolf. Right? The, the, the way he was standing, and we could probably say the same thing about Sarah, exactly the place and, and everything, that was all maneuvered so that it should be exactly the way it needs to be for the results to end up the way they were going to end up. Right? So, does, so does, does that mean we don't have control? No, it means we have control over certain things, but there are certain things that Hashem takes control of for us. So it's the yeah. same as going to be true of thoughts. And the same is going to be true of speech. There are going to be certain times you might blurt something out that you didn't mean to say. And sometimes that's not going to be a product of your choice. Sometimes that'll be a product of Hashem's choosing. I, I cannot tell you how many times in my years here in Savannah I've been asked questions that I never thought about before. And a great answer came to me and I answered them on the spot. And then I was at a conference a couple of weeks ago, a Rosh Kolo's conference. And one of the, the senior Rosh Hakala, who's, you know, in his 70s, been doing this a very long time, he says, and you know about all those times where someone asks you a question you've never thought about and that answer just comes to you? He says, that is Hashem's helping you. That's not a product of your thought. That's Hashem putting things into your head because you have a purpose for being where you are. And your purpose at that moment was to answer this person's question appropriately. You know, you didn't know the answer to that. But Hashem gave it to you at that time because that was your job, is that you needed to give that answer. So it's the, it, Hashem controls things when He needs to. Otherwise, He leaves it up to us. I add something about Can I add something? To please, it? please. Rabbi Goldman. Got all day. If you took the extreme case of this lack of control of thought, it might be something like somebody with OCD. Right, obsessive compulsive disorder, and you would say, okay, well, so it appears that he, the person doesn't have control, and during the process of the, the disease or that they're suffering from, you would have a modern psychiatric view that would say something like, oh, well, that's biochemical. You have these neurotransmitters doing something to you, and uh, you need to take this medicine. And there's no question that some of those people do respond to the medicine. My clinical experience, my professional experience, and it may be different than yours, is very much more in line with what I think Rabbi Nidikman is saying. He's trying to get brownie points here. No, no, is that, <laughs> is that, I, that 
those people actually have something else that in their formative years or some other time had so much influence on them that it reconstructed their personality in a way to produce this set of things. And there are ways in which there's so much what's called neuroplasticity in the way the brain works that if that individual went to certain kinds of non-drug therapies, they could come out the other end and go, oh, well, I'm a very organized, meticulous person, but I'm no longer OCD. And that would happen, and that has happened. Unfortunately, that's not practiced a great deal. It's more about, we'll take these It's much easier to give the medicine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, here's the prescription, and so forth. And so, and so that's an example like of that looks like so much like it's out of control. And yet what really happened was the person, quote unquote, was forced to learn that through these difficult experiences they went through. And now they go through something and their brain allows them to relearn a period, uh, learn, learn the process and go, oh, I can think normally now. Now when they start to think normally, they still have the fleeting thoughts that we're talking about, because we all do. And the only thing I would add to what you said, and I don't know if it's an addition or not, but I've always found that the fleeting thoughts usually are, if they come back, they're trying to tell you something. There's something there that's useful, and it's very, it, like it, with, with you know mindfulness ideas, you can choose to just let it go, and that's one form of mindfulness. It's not a very advanced form. A more advanced form of mindfulness is saying, oh, I've had this fleeting thought a couple of times. I wonder what it might be trying to suggest that I'm supposed to really reflect more deeply on. And that then is a form of taking control of your thoughts. And eventually, when you say, oh, I think I know what this is about, you discover the fleeting thoughts about that topic don't seem to yeah. emerge well, I anymore. I concur with that. I think I'm not sure that it is. I'm with right? Rabbi Goldman. I do think that we have far more thoughts than we do actions. Oh, and I think that the, the ability to be able to filter through some of our thoughts and not act out on them is a mixed one itself. I don't know if anybody says that, but let's say, you guys heard about this, let's say anybody has a thought, that, uh, that a thought, that they're going to, like, like we talked about last week, John Hickey Jr., what are, you know, maybe he had that thought, but what if he didn't act on that thought? So that would be all, that would be more meritorious to him, correct? That he'd get more, it's probably like uh, having this. For resisting, to, acting on it. Yeah. Right, uh, resisting <coughs> on acting out, but at the same time, with that thought that was destructive, it also still affected uh, the world of the world. But 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 I, I want to just add like if you don't take somebody like Hinckley who we all tend to think of as insane and he probably was, all of us at various times of our li life have had some very bad thoughts about wanting to see harm to somebody else. What? And so in your sleep. Oh, come on, just lay and, and so and so the the, the point I want to make is that. When you have that thought, again, yeah. you're saying to yourself, oh, what's going on with me that I would have such an evil thought? And so All that's right, useful. I don't know if you want this on, the, on camera here. I don't, I don't, I don't, so that was, that's very <laughs> useful information. That's useful information. You go, oh, I look at me. I don't work where you work. <laughs> I don't have to see this every day. Uh, <laughs> you do. The now what's in me. Now what? I think you must have played violent video games as a kid. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> they didn't exist yet? <laughs> but I, yeah, <laughs> because all those experiences create feelings, and those feelings, unless they're processed and um, put in their place, feelings are energy, and energy just doesn't go away. So we push the energy down, we push the energy down. There's something that may be not even in our consciousness triggers it, and then there comes that yeah. thought. And but like you were saying, it's got to be processed and not necessarily the place. Right. I mean, yeah. Floyd, wow. Floyd, Floyd, I mean, Floyd had his own issues, but Floyd said, not unexpressed emotions that, that are suppressed will find a way out. Yeah. Yeah. It, it will find a way Ten out. Ten cents under pressure. One way or another, it could be <coughs> very yeah. off the grid, off, you know, not on the radar, but uh, it will find a way out, one way or another. Yeah. Behaviors that seem yeah. innocuous, but 
Yes. All right. Let me let me just end with one one uh, thought over here. Um, we are running late a little bit here. So, um, one thing that that uh, I think is very important to note to keep our perspective accurate is that we have to realize that the effect of good things is generally speaking, much greater than the effect of parallel bad things. So if we were to put it on a scale, one bad thought versus one good thought, assuming they were of equal intensity, um, the good thought would be much more powerful in the upper realm. So, you know, I, I did this exercise with my uh, women's Perky Elvis class. Bill, were you at this one where I went through the, uh, the 500 to, to 1? You, were you here? I don't remember if you were there for that. So basically someone said, oh, this is so overwhelming. How can we go through life? You know, we're, we're constantly bombarded with all this negativity and immorality and violence and all these things that are constantly hitting us all day. How are we supposed to get through? And I said, well, let's think of it this way. I said, how many times a day are you encountering something like that? And we threw a number out. We said 20 times a day. Okay. I said, well, how many times is that going to be in a week? Anybody? Anybody? 140 times. Okay. So how much is that going to be in a month? 30-day month. What? 4,000 something. Anybody? 4,000 something. 4,000. Is that what it is? Oh, close. 170 times 30? 140. 140, I'm sorry. 140 times 30? Anybody? Give me an idea. 510. 570 times 30? Yes. I'm sorry. No. That's times three. Times 30, oh. 140. Oh, times four. Oh. You said one month. Okay. Right. You say one month or year. Yes, I'm sorry. So times four. My bad. Right. 140 times four. Yes, my mistake. Not times 30. Not a day. Right. My mistake. Okay? So we're talking about how many negative interactions we have in a month. A lot. Okay, so let's get an idea, let's say about 500, is that what it was? All right, about 500 times a month, okay? Yes, are, are we on the same page here now that I got my numbers straight? So about 500 times a month, we're being, we're being Bombarded. fed negativity, immorality, violence, politics, right? All these things. You have to understand that the Gemara says that goodness is 500 times more powerful than evil. Which means that an entire month's worth of negativity is counteracted by a single good interaction. So you wonder how you're going to get through? Not so bad. Yeah. Not so bad. There's a lot of negativity out there, but it pales in comparison to the amount of good that's out there. The amount of good that we can put out there, we're way ahead. Way, way ahead. But don't worry so much. And come back next week. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, next week, we'll, is everybody up for next week? Yeah. Next week is, is getting close to Pesach, very close. I, I, I can't commit until When are you traveling to Chicago? When? You don't know, clearly. <laughs> you think you're going Sunday? Oh, wow, okay. All right, well, I'm going to put it on the chat. We'll see how many people are here. If enough people are around, we'll have class next week. Either way, have a wonderful Pesach. Have a wonderful time preparing for Pesach. Yeah. And remember, <laughs> we'll and remember, we didn't bye -bye. finish.